Richard Goodwin knows about power firsthand, having worked as an advisor and speechwriter in the Kennedy and Johnson White House. His resume also includes numerous books and a play, Two Men of Florence, which opens next month at the Huntington Theater. Dick Goodwin's always had a flair for the dramatic, but now he's actually taking it to the stage. Oh man, you made it. Goodwin's production of his play, Two Men of Florence, goes up at Boston's Huntington Theater in just one month. Today, the 77 year old first time playwright is at the theater for the traditional meet and greet of actors and director. The actors are really very interested in knowing what I think about the inner motivations of the character. For a man who has walked with presidents and prime ministers and sparred with Fidel Castro and Che Guevara, it's no surprise he would author a play about two giant historic figures. The play, set in the 1600s, is all about Galileo and the Pope who turned against him, condemning him as a heretic. The Pope eventually betrays Galileo. Is there a parallel in the political world that you've seen? I mean, people in politics are always betraying one another and uh, if it's their interest to do so. So you've got to realize that self-interest is the guiding motivation of political life. Dick Goodwin knows about political life. John F. Kennedy had his eye on the bright young man from Massachusetts, and at 27, Goodwin began writing speeches for the president. Jackie Kennedy took a liking to him, and that friendship would last her whole life long. Well, you know, I really liked her. She was uh, warm, intelligent, uh, beautiful, and she, you know, she had she opened up, talked freely about her marriage and uh, her time in the White House. And I saw her the week before she died, and this thing came out of nowhere. It was a real blow. For President Lyndon Johnson, Dick Goodwin wrote his best-known work, The Voting Rights Speech, a stirring call to action, and it worked. But he left Johnson over Vietnam and joined another Kennedy. What did we uh, lose when we lost Robert Kennedy? I was in that hotel, the uh, ambassador in Los Angeles. This was a big victory night in the California primary. And then he went downstairs and he got shot. June 5th, 1968. I mean, to me personally, because Bobby, I was probably closer to him on a personal basis than I was to either of the others. You know, he had great possibilities in Bobby. Goodwin says There's having two years. people he worked for shot oh, to death dulled his really appetite for politics. Himself. He left government and turned to writing, opinion pieces, magazine articles, books. Along with his wife, Pulitzer Prize winner Doris Kearns Goodwin, he is still carving out an interesting life, now adding the title playwright. His work rate is prodigious, his mind is extraordinary, and he's been so much a part of the development of, um, of America. Edward Hall directed the play when it debuted outside of London. Now, to Dick Goodwin's delight, Hall will do it again in Boston. I first came across Richard by reading his, his wonderful book, Remembering America, about his time writing for, for Kennedy and, and Johnson. I think the play he's written is an extension of the things he's learned and the skills he's developed and the life he's led, which most of us, by the time, by the time Richard was 30, he'd lived, he'd done more in his life than I think most of us would do in 10 lifetimes. Galileo has done nothing. Of course not. The truth is not enough. Appearance is of equal weight. And the stars, J. O. Sanders as Galileo and Edward Herman as the Pope, are equally intrigued with the play. Galileo is introducing um, um, a way of thinking about the universe which makes God unnecessary. And for a churchman, the head of the greatest religion on the face of the earth, this is anathema. This of course, is, he's, this is a, he's overstating the case, being the pope. <laughs> well, and it's, not is, that, it's not that God's unnecessary no. or that he's being replaced. That's it's that, his opinion. It's that God exists in everything and that what we, what we lack is the ability to understand and interpret that. So these two ideas so those are what, bashing together. Yeah. How fulfilling is this at this stage in your life versus what you did earlier? How does, how does the second act feel? Well, it feels great. I mean, I, I, I like writing and I, I'm delighted to be able to do a play which I think has something to say. And, uh, you know, it's feel, it feels good. Does it feel as good as a winning the 1960 campaign? 
I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. That's a tough, tough choice. Let's see, writing a play, engineering <laughs> yeah. a winning presidential exactly. campaign. Now it opens next month. It opens next month. It opens March 6th, runs mm -hmm. through early April, April 5th. And Dick, as unlike some writers, plans to be at every single rehearsal. And he says that the young actors actually love to come up to him and ask him, what was this scene really about? What mm. was this person like? And of course, with typical humor, he says, and then I have to make it up because I never knew either one of them myself. Now, <laughs> I'm curious, Mary, this is a guy in, in Dick Good. When he goes home, he shares his house with a rather other famous writer yes, in her yes. own right, and Doris they, Goodwin. They, Do they collaborate? I know where that question is going. Yeah? They each read each other's uh, work. Okay. Yeah. All right. They so help out. They have good editors, let's put it that way. <laughs> 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 Giving a second act to your face. A doctor explores his business side when Chronicle continues.